Hey guys! So in this video, we're going to talk about stoichiometry and thermochemistry. I told you stoichiometry was never going to go away. So you have to learn to just embrace it. So first of all, before we just dive right in, we've got to know a couple of key terms. Um, not necessarily key terms, but key, key concepts. And so first of all, when we are working with stoichiometry, we are just trying to convert your delta H which is your enthalpy to your Q, which is heat, or the other way around. So we're just converting between delta H and Q. That's all we're doing here. And so what's very important to realize is the units that's involved with both. When we are discussing delta H or enthalpy, it has units of kilojoules per mole reaction. When we're discussing heat or Q, that is in the unit of kilojoules. And so Hopefully it should make sense why we're doing stoichiometry here because what is the difference between these? It's moles and whenever we're working with moles, we have to work with stoichiometry and so that's why stoichiometry is our approach for this when we're converting between delta H and Q back and forth. Now some key words, whenever you see these different um, questions and whatnot, you have to be able to pick out important keywords because sign conventions are super important in this unit. So if you see the keywords as released, right? So something released energy in the form of heat. There's so many somethings released, okay? That means that it is exothermic. And remember, the sign conventions for Q and delta H for exothermic reactions are negative. So if you don't have that sign there, that negative sign, then it's, it's, called, it's an incorrect answer. And so that's very important to be able to pick that out. If I say the word, see the word absorbed, then that means that that is endothermic. And therefore those are positive Q and positive delta H quantities. So make sure you're able to kind of see this while you're reading the question. And, and then determine if it's endo or exothermic based upon those keywords. Something else that you might see. Sometimes they like to write your amount of kilojoules, um, so in this enthalpy, um, delta H in the reaction. And so you'll see your reaction written, but somewhere in there you'll have like a kilojoule quantity. Well, you've got to understand this. If kilojoules is written in the reaction, first of all, that's not your heat it is your enthalpy. Now it will just say kilojoules. It won't say kilojoules per mole reaction because it's um, already self-known that that is per one reaction. So we look at the entire reaction and that's one. And so if that enthalpy is just gonna be kilojoules is written in the reaction and we see it on the product side, then that means that the reaction is exothermic. So when we write out our Q and our delta H quantities, they are both negative. If we see our kilojoules in the reaction and it's written on the reactant side, and that means that we have an endothermic process. And so they are both positive Q and delta H quantities. And this will make more sense when we're actually doing some practice problems. And so there's two things that we're going to be able to do today. We're going to solve for heat, Q, when we are given grams and delta H. So how I know to use the stoichiometry approach is whenever you are given grams and either delta H or Q, and you're trying to find the opposite thing, that lets us know that we are using this approach. You'll see as we start learning a lot of different things dealing with delta H, it's very important to know when do I use what approach. So we always use the stoichiometry approach when grams is given to us in the problem. Now, for the first thing, we're going to solve for Q given delta H in grams. And for our second example, we're going to be solving for enthalpy given Q and grams there. And so let's go into the process. How do we work these problems? Let's say that we are given this information here. We have this reaction. So three F E plus two O two yields F E three O four. 
And in the problem, we are given five grams of iron. And we know that the delta H is negative 1120 kilojoules per mole reaction. So do you see how we have delta H given to us here? Um, so what are we trying to find here? So our goal is to figure out our amount of heat. And so what do we do? What is our approach? First of all, let's answer the question, is this overall reaction endo or exothermic? Well, hopefully you're thinking to yourself that the overall reaction is exothermic. How do I know? Because we have a negative delta H quantity. If I were to see this in the reaction, we would have the 1120 kilojoules written on the product side. Now notice that in this reaction here, we don't have the negative written in there. We don't ever have negative signs written in a reaction. So that's why it's important to know if it's on the product side, we have to give it a negative delta H. We have to give it a negative Q. All right, so this is how it would look if this delta H was written in the reaction instead. It would be positive 1,120 kilojoules written on the product side because it's exothermic. Okay, so now what do we do? How do we start the problem? Well, all we do here is dimensional analysis. So the very first thing we're gonna have to do is get my grams into moles. Because remember how we talked about the difference between these two things here are moles. And so step one, get into moles. So we're gonna start my dimensional analysis. Let me use a different marker. I'm gonna say five grams of Fe, and I have to get in a mole, so I'm gonna use the molar mass of iron, which is 55.85 grams for every one mole of iron. And so now we have gotten into moles. Well, my whole goal is to get rid of moles of reaction because that is the difference between these units here. So how does mole of iron and mole of reaction correlate with one another? We're working with a mole to mole ratio again. So we're always gonna say that we have one mole of reaction here. So we're saying in one mole of reaction, how many moles of iron do we have? We look at our coefficient. So there are three moles of iron for every one mole of reaction. And so we are going to put this in our dimensional analysis as a mole to mole ratio. Which one is gonna go on the bottom? Well, do you see how I'm able to get rid of grams of iron? I want to also be able to get rid of moles of iron. So I'm gonna put our moles of iron on the bottom. So there are three moles of iron for every one mole of reaction. And do you see how that gets rid of moles of iron like so? Now, I wanna get rid of moles of reaction, so I'm going to use this here. This is basically saying there are negative 1,120 kilojoules for every one mole of reaction. And so we are going to put this into our dimensional analysis. For every one mole of reaction, you see how this is on the bottom, so I can cross out my units, there are negative 1,120 kilojoules. So now, we have moles of reaction gone, and we are left with the units of kilojoules, and that's what we want because that is Q's units right here. So then when we go through and actually work this math, we're gonna divide by 55.85, divide by three, and multiply by negative 1,120. Um, we are going to get negative 
kilojoules. And so that is my heat, Q. And what is happening there? Let's talk about these key terms. Since there are negative 33.4 kilojoules, that negative sign means that that heat is released. And so that is my final answer. And so this is an example of how I am given grams and delta H, and I am going to use dimensional analysis in order to find Q. Let's do another example problem, but this time I want to add another little curveball to you. Let's talk about, let's see. What if we have this reaction given, same reaction, we still want to find Q, we still want to find Q, but instead of giving you, um, let's see, ex instead of giving you five grams of iron, I'm going to also tell you that we have five grams of O2. So what is our approach here. We still have delta H given. We still have grams given. But in this case, we're given grams of both of our reactants. And we also are, are still trying to find Q. And so what is our approach here? Well, this is stoichiometry. We are given grams of more than one reactant. So guess what we get to do? we get to do a limiting reactant problem. And once we find the limiting reactant, that is the one that I'm going to set up the dimensional analysis with. So let's go ahead and go into this question. I am given five grams of iron and five grams of O2. And so I am going to figure out my moles of both of those. So five grams of iron, divided by 55.85 grams for every one mole of iron. That ends up being 0 0.0895 moles of iron. So 0 0.0895 there, that's moles. I also want to find the moles of O2. So um, we had five grams of O2 O2's molar mass is 32 grams for every one mole of O2. And so when I do that math, I get 0.156 moles of O2. So I'm going to plug that into my limiting reactant rice chart. And again, why am I finding my limiting reactant? It is because I have more than one piece of information about my reactants. So I have to figure out who is the limiting reactant first. And my limiting reactant is going to be the one to dictate how much energy in the form of heat that I get from the reaction. And so based upon this here, I can determine which one is my limiting reactant. So if I take this number and divide by three, and then I take this number and divide by two, then that means that this is going to be my smaller quantity, right? Or see how we're comparing our limiting reactants here. So what that tells me is that the iron is going to be the limiting reactant and I will have some amount of O2 in excess. So now how do I figure out my Q from this? I am going to use my limiting reactant to do my dimensional analysis. So you could start with five grams of iron and go through there, or you could start with the moles for my dimensional analysis. So I'm going to say 0 0.0895 moles of iron. Remember our next step. We want to get into moles of reaction so we can get rid of it. So I've already done my first step. I've gotten my grams into moles. I now want to get into moles of reaction. So I'm going to say that there are three moles of iron for every one mole of reaction. And then my next step is to get rid of moles of reaction. So there is one mole of reaction 
for every negative 1,120 kilojoules. So do you see how, again, we're doing the same process. We're getting rid of our units. We're working with moles. We're working with mole mole ratios. We're getting rid of our units. And that's all that stoichiometry is. When we do this math, we will get the same answer. Negative 33.4 kilojoules of heat is released. It's released because it is exothermic. We know it's exothermic because of the negative delta H sign. What will happen to our surroundings as a result? Well, our surroundings will get warmer because it's exothermic. And so therefore, if we were to take a temperature reading, our temperature will increase. So this is how we work through, given our grams, given our delta H, finding Q. You can do it if they just give you one reactant or they could give you two reactants. We have to find the limiting reactant first and then we work our dimensional analysis from there. So now for the next part of our video, we're going to try to work backwards. How do we solve for enthalpy? So see here we are given enthalpy. How are we gonna solve for enthalpy when we're given Q and grams? So let's work through an example problem with this one. So I'm gonna deal with the same reaction, I think. Yeah, let's do the same reaction. 3Fe plus 2O2 yields Fe3O4. And so what do we do from here? Well, we need to know what information is given to us. So in the problem, we have negative 66.8 kilojoules given to me. And so that will be our Q because that's just in kilojoules. And we have 10 grams of iron also given to us. And so what do we have to do if we want to find enthalpy? Well, think about what is the difference between enthalpy and Q. Enthalpy, we have to divide by moles of reaction. We take our kilojoules, which we already have it, and we divide by moles of reaction. So our approach here is we're gonna have to take this gram amount and find moles of reaction from that. And again, we're gonna do it with dimensional analysis. So I have 10 grams of iron. We use the molar mass, which is 55.85 grams for every one mole of iron. You see how that gets rid of grams of iron. So now we have moles of iron. I don't want just moles of iron. I want moles of reaction. So we have to use our dimensional analysis. And we have to say there are three moles of iron for every, oh, there's my three right there, for every one mole of reaction. And we get to stop there because I'm going to take my kilojoules and divide it by moles of reaction. So I'm gonna to have to figure out this numerical value first. So I'm gonna take 10 divided by 55.85 divided by three, and that gives me 0 0.0597 moles reaction. And so this is the moles of reaction. We know our kilojoules so delta H is kilojoules divided by moles of reaction. So we're gonna take the negative 66.8 kilojoules. We are gonna divide by our moles of reaction, moles of reaction. And when we divide those two quantities, we get negative 1,119 kilojoules per mole reaction. And so this value right here should match up pretty much with the value that we have here. Now, negative 1,119 is pretty close to negative 1,120. We might have done some rounding here, which got us off on our answer a little bit. And so what do we do if we have Q and grams given to us and we're trying to find delta H? First thing, we have to find moles of reaction. We do that with dimensional analysis. Step two, 
we are going to take our heat, which is kilojoules, and divide it by that moles of reaction because we want the units kilojoules per mole reaction. And when we do that, we will always get the delta H quantity of the entire reaction. So this is how you do the stoichiometry process. Um, remember, you are always given grams and you're either trying to convert between delta H or Q or the other way around. So what I um, want you guys to do now, if you look at your um, packet here, okay? If you go to page four, on the top of that page, there's exercise four. And so it gives you the reaction there and it asks a couple of questions dealing with the stoichiometry. And so I want you guys to do this as a practice problem the answers should be written on the bottom. If they're not written on the bottom, then I will make sure I give it to you in class or for those of you at home, I'll, give you, I'll send you a, a message with those answers. And so I want you guys to do exercise four. After you complete exercise four and you feel good about it, then you guys are going to work some practice problems. There's 10 of them dealing with the stoichiometry so you'll get comfortable with it. So this is how we use stoichiometry in thermochemistry. We do dimensional analysis. Make sure you're writing in your units and canceling them out so you do not get confused. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Adios.